All right, good morning or good evening. Uh, and thanks for joining our Migrating to Six webinar today. If you have any questions during your session, please submit them using the Q&A button at the top of the interface. Those questions will be answered at the end. This webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a copy of it delivered to your email account. I hope you enjoy, and I'll now hand you over to our expert, Kari Hautamaki, who's a senior ma training manager at the Cube company. Over to you, Kari. Hello, everyone. So the, the topic for today is to discuss a little bit about the migrating to Qt 6 as the version has been now out for a couple of months and the new versions are coming. So it's time to discuss when and how would you migrate to the new version. So here I have listed uh, the topics that we are going through here today. So there, the first there is motivation, why you should mo migrate and what is the like good practical path to migrate to the Qt6. And then a little bit more technical topics. So what, what are the roadmaps for the modules? What are the tools you need? And then if there are technology or module changes, what you will need to do for those. So first of all, why would you need to, or why would you want to migrate to Qt6? So first of all, the, as the Qt6 is now the newest version, all the new features will come up to the new Qt6 releases. The older versions only get bug fixes and, and security updates but no new features will be there. And then we have worked a lot for unifying the rendering. So the 2D and 3D in, in the scene craft side on the QML, they work same way. So the quick 3D module will get improvements and there will be added benefit for using 3D using scene craft. And then there are also improved rendering hardware abstract trace and layer. It has been already available there in, in, since Qt 5.14, but now it's lots more improvements there. And also we have changed a little bit of the module structure or the installation mechanism. So many of the modules will be add-on modules and that will then make the binary footprint of your Qt installation a little bit smaller. So that's also might be added benefit for you. So if we take a look or think about what is the good migration path to go into Qt6. So there is an, in, the, in this diagram, there is a, like a high level sketch of the migration what you could do so first of all it's the easiest if you go to Qt 515 if, if you are not already there because then it's the stepping to Qt 6 is much easier from there and then then when you have been doing done the porting for Qt 515 then you would could check the what are the modules which are available already as the we are gradually in introducing the new modules or the existing modules to Qt6. It might be that not all modules are already there. So you need to check that are you actually able to go to Qt6 at this point. And then you need to check that you have the all the necessary tools. For example, you have correct compilers and and, and host and target platforms are something that you are supported by Qt6. And then there is the actual migration to Qt6 doing all the necessary changes that you need to do. And all when everything is working fine, well, okay, might not yet work fine, but you have done the porting, then you should check that is there any regressions, for example, graphics or some minor, uh, well, implementation has in Qt has a little bit changed, so you might want to check that everything works as expected. It might be that you can compile everything correctly, but still the outcome of your porting or the run state of your application might not be exactly how it used to be. And then when you are done with this, 
you are ready, and then you can start using the new features of Qt6. So here is a slide about what you should do uh, if you are not, well, okay, that's a little bit wrong. It should be port to Qt6. So the Qt515, it's a stepping stone. So it's the easiest path to go to Qt6 as there's least amount of changes needed there. And then moving to Qt515 is easy within five Qt5 versions. So one easy way to check that you everything works as you expected, you should port away from the deprecated features. So you can change those, this disable deprecated before flag in your build files so that all the warnings will become errors and you will see that you have used some features that are already deprecated so that you know that you need to work on these. And then there is also tool in Qt Creator, see lazy, you can use that to port or check what are the potential problems in Qt6. So you can get rid of those warnings and then you are less likely to get, encounter any problems in Qt6. And then if you are, uh, if you port to Qt 5.15 from an earlier version, and then you, it's not anyway, it's not a bad decision to go that way because the Qt 5.15 is LTS version and it will be still supported until 2023. So anyway, it's a kind of good, good move forward. Even you would not be able to go to Qt 6 at this point. And it will be then a good starting point if you want to migrate to Qt6 at some later place. Okay, this is the standards that we have at the moment. And then there is also the envisioned feature how the, all the modules will be included in the Qt offering. So now in Qt, we are in. Qt 6 low. So many of the or most of the essential modules are there already. So you can write widget applications, you can write QML quick applications. And then all lots of different other supporting modules are there. So you can create 3D also already. And also the most the host platforms are there, Windows, Mac and, and Linux. And then there's a couple of, well, embedded and mobile is already supported. But now in Qt 6.1 will be in coming out in April, and there will be a couple of other new modules included there. So like charts and LOTI, SCXML. And then we have Qt 6.2 coming up in September, and then it will have the most last of the modules that are, have not been included yet. And that will be also be a LTS version. So you will have extended support for that. And then along the way you, with Q, uh, 6.1 and 6.2, we will introduce new platforms that you can use. Or oh, well, these are new new supported platform, so it's not really strictly related to migration, but it's what providing new platforms to run on. So this is something that you need to take into account when you plan when to migrate. Uh, because there is, you might have be using some of the modules that are not already supported or they become supported later. Then, uh, in, in starting from Qt6, many of the modules will be provided 
as add-on modules. So they are not actually the part of the core installation that you install if you when you get the binaries. Instead, you can opt in by selecting number of all, or those modules that you really need from the install installer and installing on only those. So this will make your binary install footprint smaller as you don't need to install those binaries that you don't need. And for 5.6 and 6.2, these add-on modules, they will be binaries, binary modules. We had an idea in, in Q6.0 that those will be provided as source packages and managed by Conan. But unfortunately, we run into problems, so it's not really that straightforward actually to do that. So we are switching back to binary packages for the next two releases. So, and the Conan path will be in will be imp implemented on parallel to this binary installation. So in, in Q6.0, those add-on packages are actually source packages, and then you need to download those and manually build if you really need those packages. And for the vertical segments, uh, there is not that big changes expected. Automotive is not unfortunately ready for Q6 at the moment. There will be preview of the automotive in Q6.1, and the final release will be Q6.2. And then there will be also a couple of new features coming or new support for the Android car APIs coming up with the new, new automotive Q6 versions. And the MTM protocols vertical is already supported. It's supported in Q6. Oh, all those modules, they are add-on modules and you can download them and use them. And then for the MCU, there shouldn't be any major issues been using MCU for Q6, so it's it, you just take the MCU packages that there are. You shouldn't need to do any special considerations regarding specifically MCU. And then there are the requirements for platforms. So for the host environment. They are to be have supporting Ming, Ming W 8.1 and Visual Compiler 2019, and then Linux is recent ones, and the Mac OS is 10, 15, and 11. And then of, in targets, of course, we are supporting all those hosts, and then Yocto 3.1, iOS, iOS 30 and 14, and for Android, we have 8, 28 build time and for runtime there is a 21 version 21. And then for <coughs> you, there might be that some other like other operating systems might exactly they might work for you already, but they are not officially supported. So either you can try them to compile them, compile for that platform yourself and or then you can ask for us to do the help you on the with the other platforms. And then, as you might already know, there has been changes in the build systems. CMake is now the official build tool. So there is the API is is improving constantly. So new the CMake will get new features whenever they will be required by Qt itself so those that API will be enhanced 
but QMake is still actually supported. You can easily migrate to Q6 as you don't need to do any changes for the build system. So you can still use QMake, but it's there is the restriction that no new features will be coming up to QMake. So it should be for the build system perspective, migration should be pretty easy. And then from tooling perspective, Qt Creator 414, it already supports Qt 6 features. So if you now take the latest official version of Qt Creator, you should have full support for Qt 6 features. And if you are doing a little higher level, you are doing UI, then Design Studio it supports the Qt 6 2D graphics as there hasn't been that much radical changes in, in UI level on the 2D. But yeah, quick 3D features are in experimental level at, at this point for Qt 6. So you can try out, Not might not be that not everything works in, in Design Studio, but the official support for 3D features in Design Studio have been planned to be available in, in version 2.2, .2, and that comes sometime after Q6.2 has been made available. And now, if we take a look into the actual uh, contents of the Qt, what has changed there? So first of all, there are a list of, list of removed modules. So there are quite a lot of modules that have been removed, though as those have been already in deprecated states for for years at some, for some part, like Qt script or then they have been just dropped out because there hasn't been that much use for those or they already they are supported well enough with some other other means and also there has been support dropped for a couple of platforms like windows 7 and 8 they are quite old already and microsoft is not extend actually providing support for those anymore anymore either so it's quite natural to drop out those and then there hasn't been that much interest at least so far for the apple watch os and tv os so they, those are not supported at the moment and also for three 32 bit binaries we don't support that anymore as mostly everything today is 64 64 bit anyway So, as there has been lots of different modules that have been removed, what you should do with that, with that, and how you should cope with that. So there is like a high level plan that you could do how to migrate away from those. Uh, the Quick Controls one is all mostly supported by, by Quick Controls two, so you could so rather relatively easy to migrate to Qt. Quick controls too, or and then if you are using preview or calendar view, you can take those from marketplace and use it from there. And same for quick extras; it's mostly covered by the controls too. And if you are using multimedia widgets, the C++ API for that has been dropped, but there is a similar they, or the API for QML, it's still there. So you can use that. So it's available in the multimedia module. So you can use those specific multimedia widgets from QML part. And graphical effects have been dropped. So they were seen that they are not really functioning very efficiently. So they will be later on replaced by quick multi-effect, at least for most parts. And if you really need those effects at the mo when you're porting to Qt6, 
you can use the Qt5 compatibility module. And the purchasing module, it's, for that you can use native APIs on Android and iOS. And we provide examples how you could use those APIs from Qt. And then the, for the rest, uh, the platform extras will and platform headers, those will be emerging back in Q6.1. And th those platform extras won't be as a separate module, they will appear as part of other modules so that you will have classes or APIs spread out in the other modules. And platform headers is there or will be there but it's not a, a classes, but it will be a namespace. And for the rest, we don't really support or give good support for need any of these. You would need to use third party lips for this. Or if you, if you are scripting, depending how you are using scripting, but if you, you might be able to use scripting using Python as it's already, well, it's supported by Qt anyway. So a couple of comments about this Qt5 compatibility, compatibility modules. So the aim for this module is to help you to ease the migration or porting process. So it provides a couple of classes from Qt core mostly that are provided there, but they are they are removed actually from Qt6. So you you if you use this module, then you will be able to use let's say sax parser and regex for example and so on. And then it, the graphical effects are part of the compatibility module. So they are available there for you to is the migration. But the target, the idea is not to continue using or just happily port to Qt6 and then use this compatibility module. So as the compatibility, compatibility module won't really get, uh, get any like improvements, not bug fixes or such. So it's as only there as a stepping stone. So when you are successfully migrated to Qt6, then you should start planning how to migrate away from it. So as there have been some oh, module changes or most parts, the changes are not that big. So they migration shouldn't be that hard to do at least for to make the code compile but there are some changes worth mentioning here Qt core has some meta system changes and and container changes that we will look into a little bit more detail in the next slides and then in Qt quick and quick d the Rendering hardware interface introduce a change such that the OpenGL is not necessarily the default anymore. So this might affect your code. So, for example, you cannot have any more OpenGL inline shader code. We will look into that also. And therefore, quick controls. There is a change well, not change visible in, in, in code level or compilation level, but there is a change that the native platform style will be used in the controls unless you explicit, explicitly specify it. So there might be in your, some in your, in your applications, you might have an impact that if you have created an application that is follows a similar look and feel across the different target platforms, then your 
if you, and you are using controls, actually your visual style will change in when migrating in Qt6. So you just need to do there, you will have to start using some other specifically specify which style you want to use. So then you will have again the uniform style across platforms. And then there are a number of other small changes. Classes have been moved or removed, or then there are name changes on method are relocated somewhere and parameters change. But they, these are not very hard to implement. It's quite obvious what you need to do when you're migrating and you need to see that compilation fails for something you will quite easily see what you need to change. So if we take a little bit deeper look in the couple of changes in Qt core, so there has been changes in meta type system. So the meta types, they are actually resolved at the compilation time. And it affects your property definitions. So as you earlier, already, earlier you were able to define properties with using forward declaration, just like there in the left side in the example, you that's not possible anymore. You have to give uh, the mock compiler the full specification of your class. So you will need to do in full include instead of forward declaration. That's like a manual work for your migration but should, should be quite straightforward. And then some changes in Q variant system. This is also something that doesn't really show you any problems when compilation, but in some cases you might experience weird or wrong behavior. <laughs> As actually the Q variant uses Q meta type. So that means that comparisons for Q variants is done differently now. So if you are, you can, if earlier you were able to compare two Q, Q variants using containing Q images, for example, and that compared true, but now in Q6 that won't work. They won't compare equal anymore. So depending on your implementation that this might have some kind of need to refactor an implementation. And also is null has changed a little bit. So if you are using is null using with Q variant, there might be some changes that you need to take into account. Earlier the is null used the is null method from the contained type if the type had that method, but now it's not used anymore. So that might have some some changes, but it's not expected that it should be a really big thing. People are not usually using is null to check some some availability. And another thing that is like invisible to compilation or in most cases, most cases it should be also invisible for the behavior. But the change has been that Q list and Q vector, they have been unified. So the Q list has similar implementation as Q vector had. And Q vector is a type kind of alias to Q list. So nowadays the Q list contains an array of the actual data. It doesn't really contain any more actual pointers to the data as it did in Q5. This actually, it's, it sounds quite innocent change, but it actually causes problems if you are using iterators and then you're actually using trying to use those iterators after doing some kind of modification in your container. 
So there in the left side on the example, there is you are using iterator and then using accessor for that. That works fine in Qt5, even though if you append something to the list, iterator remains valid. But it's that's not true anymore in Qt6. So the iterator becomes invalid as soon as you modify the Q list somehow. The change is that to assign a value for the iterator again, as shown on the right side of the example. <coughs> and then there is also the reason, uh, the because of the adding these or putting these contents of a list inside of the continuous memory area, you will need to do memory allocations when you are adding more information or more data into the list. So if you happen to have big data elements that are going on into list, that might have an effect on your performance as, as you keep adding more and more elements, then you need to move around the elements of the list and that, that might have a performance effect. So then you might need to reconsider changing how you store information into the container. And last of the things about Qt core here is that the containers, they return Q size type. This is not really big thing from the migration. It's just that you might get warnings. So as the size, for example, here, it doesn't really return int anymore. You might get the warning that you are narrowing the scope. So the cure for this is to replace the size with auto type of variable. But is the size type now, now it allows to use larger containers than 32 bit indexes in the container. And then there are a the couple of slides about the graphics changes in Qt6. So there has been the rendering hardware interface already, but now it's improved. And, they, and it's, its main effect is that OpenGL is not always the rendering backend in Qt Quick anymore. So if you happen to be running on, on Mac, you will have a metal back in there. And so on in, in Windows, it's direct, direct 3D and so on. Unless you specifically specify that you want to open GL, you will get the native back, back end what the platform provides. And as the, as the we are now supporting multiple different backends for the graphics, we cannot use OpenGL anymore as the shader language. So we need to do changes for that. So inline shader code is not needed or supported anymore. And we will see what you need to do with that. And then it's also that if you happen to be using a little bit lower level, seeing craft directly, then you cannot rely on OpenGL or should not rely that you have OpenGL as a backend. So as a minimum, what you need to do for our rendering hardware interface is that you need to convert your shader code to Vulkan compatible shader code. So it's not that big changes that you need to do, it's quite sim simple to do, but still it's manual work that you need to do when migration. And then it's it's the required step that you use Vulkan style. And but if you would even you have done that, then you have a possibility to use the certain QSB tool to convert that code into portable shader code. So then it will make the shader code available as a native shader code depending on the platform. 
So the open sale still continues to work. But then you will just need to do that you will select the packet as OpenGL. But regardless of this, you need to do the Vulkan compatible shader language changes. And then, of course, as there have been changes in in, in the backend, OpenGL is not always as the expected backend in the API. So you don't really can expect that some, some of the API methods are actually OpenGL specific anymore. Like texture ID is not OpenGL texture ID anymore. And one specific change for Windows is that angle is not supported. So to remedy this, you will need to use either use open G switch open GL ES to open GL or then use the R E R H I and that will decide what is the best backend for you. So they is anyway this shouldn't affect your output, but this is anyway it's a graphics change and you need to write shader code changes, you should check that your graphics still work as expected. In all cases, you should all check all your graphics path, uh, your UI paths to check that everything is works as expected. So here is what you need to do for the GL uh, shader code, what you need to change. So you have to move from any inline shader code into ex external files and call, convert them to Vulkan style if they are not already. And then you possibly can run the QSP tool and then they'll, that will create platform specific shaders for your application. And then you will, when you have moved the inline Say the code to external files, then you need to use the URLs in your QML files to ac actually access the say the files. And then we have support in Qt Creator to help the migration. So there we have C lazy there. So you can enable C lazy checks. In, in your Qt 515 version, which will show you what you will need to do, what will be, what are the features that won't be supported in Qt 6. So you can work on those in Qt 515 and remove those warnings and then the migration to Qt 6 should be quite straightforward. And then comments about Yocto open embedded, that should not be problematic. You simply change your recipes and layers to from Qt5 to Qt6 specific layers. Or if you have, depending on the build system you want to use, you either take Qt6 QMake or Qt6 CMake recipe in your project. And then there are, as the, many of the modules are add-on modules, you'd, we have recipes for all those add-on modules with, that you can then include in your recipes, depending on which, which modules you need. And then also Python is supported already in Qt 6.0. So everything that's supported in, in, in C++ side in, in 6.0, is, it's supported also in Python. The only thing that you will need to do is to imp, uh, improve or change the uh, import statements. So instead of using PySide 2, you need to import from PySide 6. So the, Really, bit funny naming change. Why to go from PySide two to PySide six? 
the reason is that the buy side two is wasn't actually very clever in name as it seemed to somehow relate to python 2 or python 3 and so on but although it was actually by uh cube for by for q5 so hopefully the by side six is more clear that it's actually q6 so when you have done your migration you can start using the new features so then you can uh, enjoy of the graphics architecture if you happen to use multiple platforms then you might get better rendering into a performance as they are the native backends are in use and the quick, quick 3d is improved in q6 and it's continuously improving new features are coming up in q6.1 uh, and 6.2 and then also in general, QML performance will be enhanced in Q6. So then in Q6, you are ready or you are able to start to take into use those improve, improved QML features. And especially in embedded, this it will be significant improvement. And then there will be bindings, or there are bindings in Qt6, which are available in, in C++, then you can start using those in, in C++ code also. And concurrent namespace got a lot of new improvements, like chaining of those operations and better control of the control of the computation using QPromise. And also as as you need to use have a Q C plus plus seventeen compiler, you can use those new features of the C plus plus seventeen version. So finally, if you run into problems, you can check documentation. All the our documentation is in, uh, updated to Q six. And then there are also guides what you need to do to, when importing. And then you can use the C lazy. And then we also provide you workshops or training sessions specifically for Qt6. So we can take a look into what are the problems or potential problems in your application, what, what might be problematic in your, in your migration or then we can also train in new topics related to Qt6. So that was all for my part. So thank you. And now it's time for any questions that you might have. Thank you, Kari. There's a couple of questions. Uh, do you wish that support rendering hardware interface? uh no they don't support it at the moment so and in general the features they don't they are they are raster painting so they are not using the scene craft anyway but there is a case that if you happen to use the quick widget that that would be something like scene craft related but there is a limitation that quick widget uses OpenGL, at least at the moment. Thank you. What about is uh, WebAssembly supported or when it will be supported? Uh, uh, at the moment, WebAssembly is not supported. It's planned to be there in Q6.2, at least some parts of that. It's, but it's still a little bit open what is actually, what are the actual modules that will be there. Thank you. Okay. I think there's some questions in the Q&A uh, section as well. So a couple more. Um, uh, uh, 
So could you could you please explain again the memory changes in QList? So uh, it might be a little bit hard to display, explain it without having any picture or the more detailed detailed explanation. But there in the blog post there is good good discussion about that. What are the QList changes? You could read that. It's very detailed and should explain your things. Explain what are actually has changed. And then there in the my changed modules, there will be also discussion what has changed for QList. Uh, what is the there is the cute quick controls quick quick one controls migration to preview from marketplaces a bit unexpected. As a company, we paid the full Qt license, and now some features of Qt need to be quite separate for Qt 6, like this component tree view. What is your plan about this for current commercial users of Qt? Uh, well, it's you know, it's, it's in marketplace. It should be, I think, the commercial license allows you to take it from there already so you shouldn't need to be using any specific cute marketplace license for that so you can use the tree view uh, The support dropped for 32-bit binary. Does this mean we will not be able to generate any 32-bit application anymore? Yeah, well, the uh, support has dropped. So you can try. It's not, it might work if it already worked. If you have recently done 32-bit builds yourself, it might still work. But it's then if you need it, we can take a look how big thing it would be to port Qt6 to 32 bit binaries. Um. And then Q6.2 is LTS, so I think it will be available for commercial users only, right? How would this look like? Q6.2x only for commercial users, and Q6.2 brands for non commercial users. So the plan or the, our policy is such that. Uh, that the we the each release gets batch releases until new minor ver version comes out. So as Q6.2 is LTS, uh, all everybody gets those batch releases until Q6.3 comes out, and th at that point, the batch releases for Q.6 are only available for commercial users. Will it be possible to access the graphics backend directly when we know exactly which one we target? Yes, it's possible. You can for you can select that you want, for example, you can use OpenGL, then that will be OpenGL for you. 
and then there are you can hand, get those native API handles from the Qt APIs, and then you can be able to you you can use those <coughs> native native features as you wish. So I guess that's all for questions or is there any other questions coming up? Uh, we can wait for a little bit longer. Um, if you scroll all the way to the, the bottom, there might be some. Oh. Uh, it looks like Qt Multimedia widgets is to be dropped in Qt 6, but is the wider Qt Multimedia C++ API affected or just a widget portion? So the, the Multimedia widgets is dropped for C++ part, but the Multimedia, that will be coming up later in Qt 6.2. It's a little bit open, at least the plan is to have it there, and it's a little bit open what will be supported there, but it's the target to it is to have it in 6.2. So the on the widget part has been widget, like those specific higher level widgets for the multimedia has been dropped up, but not multimedia itself. I think we are running out of time, but if there's a, a one more question, we can probably take that one. Uh, would Qt6 be available for all current commercial users or, or it requires a separate license update or purchase? No, it doesn't, it's available for everybody. Okay, unfortunately, I think that's all the time we have for today. Um, but if there are any questions that weren't answered, we'll go back to those um, directly to you. Uh, but for now, I'd like to thank Gary uh, for the great presentation and everyone for joining. Um, like I mentioned, uh, this webinar will be recorded. Um, but if you had any more questions that you, you thought of, uh, please send us an email at info at Q2IO and we'll go back to you uh, on those questions. But um, thanks again, and I'll wish you a great day. And until next time, goodbye.